Hello, it's Ada from the chatbot team and today I want to show you how to collect user data with the use of the question block, attributes and entities. In one of the other videos, we created a gallery of different plans for our shop here. And these buttons here can link to your website URLs with specific products on them. But we want to set up the something else button now. This button will lead to a flow where the customer is interested in a more rare plant. So let's close that one. Let's add a user input and a bot response. Let's click on our bot response. Here we want to add an image first to make it more custom looking like. And let's add a quick reply. Here we want to add some text. Specifically, I see you're looking for something special. Currently, we don't have any rare plants in our store, but if you want to leave us your information, we'll get back to you as soon as they're in stock. We'll now add two buttons. One, will lead the customer back to the menu. So what we want to do is let's say no menu, please. And we want to choose the button type as go to block and click on our menu here. Let's save our settings and let's add another button. And this one will uh, lead us to a question block that will serve as a form. So let's say, OK, let's do it. The button type will also be go to block. But for now, we can't select any value because we don't have our question block yet. But let's save our settings, save the block. All right, let's add our question block. And let's add our user input in between the bot response and the question. We want to do that because if you don't add a user input, the bot will go straight from the question with the quick replies to the question. So the customer won't have the time to click either of the buttons in the quick replies. Okay, let's click on the question and let's add our first question. Okay, let's say, we we'll want to ask for the customer's name first. Next, you can see validate response with entity. Entities are data buckets that contain words and phrases with similar characteristics, such as movie genres or product lists. You can create as many entities as you need, but to save your time, you can also use ready to use system entities. So in this case, there is a variety of names. So we'll validate this with the system entity any. You can see this is a list of my own custom entities, but we'll want to scroll down to system entities. Any here will match perfectly since we can't predict what name the user will type. Neither of these other system entities will match. So alphanumeric can match both letters and numerals, but it can only gather the first part of the name. So if someone has a name that's divided by a space, this will only catch the first part. It's also not an email, not a number, etc. So we'll want to pick any here. In the safe response to attribute, we'll discuss attributes in more detail in another video. But in short, attributes allow you to assign information to users or ongoing chats. For now, let's simply choose the system attribute name, since that is what we're collecting here. In the action on failure input, you have two options, either go to success block or go to the failure block. You have these two options here as well. And what it means that if the name, the question cannot be validated properly, you will have to choose what the bot should do. If you go, if you decide to go to the success block, the bot will skip the question even though it's not correctly answered. And if you choose the failure block, the bot will ask again the same question. In this case, 
were validating the response with the entity any. So any response will be accepted. So it doesn't really matter in this question, but I'll show you how it matters in the next one. So in the second question, we'll want to ask for the customer's email. We'll want to validate the response with entity. That's called email. And what it means that this entity will accept a response that looks like an email. So it has to have the at symbol and it has to end with dot com, for example. In the save response to attribute, we'll choose email as well. This is a system attribute. And when the action on failure input happens, we'll want to choose to go to the failure block. We do need the email address that the customer provides here. So if they choose if they type in a, an incorrect email, we'll want to retype it again. All right. The last question, we'll want to ask what types of plants the customer is interested. So let's type it in. In validate response with entity, we'll choose any as well because we cannot predict what the customer is gonna, going to type. It probably will be a multiple word answer. In the save response to attribute, we don't have any attribute here that would match what we want to collect here. So we'll click add custom attribute and we'll name this attribute rare plants and click add attribute. So what it means that whatever the customer responds with, will save that information to the attribute rare plants. With the action on failure input, we'll just leave it as it is and we'll go to the failure input. All right, so let's save our question block. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, you have two branches, success and failure. And if you don't want the bot to ask the same question if the user response isn't validated properly, you can customize it here. So for example, you can add a bot response to the failure block and for example, ask for the email differently if it isn't validated properly. It doesn't have to go to the same question again. All right. To make it easier to contact the customers interested in rare plants, let's use the add to segment block. This will allow you to access a list of the emails very easily. So simply drag add to segment to your story, click on it and choose the proper segment that you set up previously. I already set up rare plants and I'll save it. All right. That's it for now and thank you for watching.